Good morning, ICF Rome family and friends from around the world. This is Pastor Jen introducing you to our Thursday Connect. We have jumped into to July with faith, with courage, with perseverance. And today I am so excited that my friend, Mary Mann, Dr. Mary Mann from Costa Rica, is going to be with us encouraging our hearts. Now, I want you to remember something. There are several key words that the Lord has given us over these last few months. And today in Pastor Mary's talk, these are some of the key words that I picked out that I hope you will too. The place, the purpose, the peace, and the presence of Jesus. The place where we are now today, where you are right now, where you're watching from, God has ordained, if you're his child, he has ordained your steps. So you don't need to second guess where you are right now. Trust in the Lord, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Embrace the place. The second is the purpose, the purpose of the storms we go through, the way the Lord strengthens us in our storms. And I want you to see the purpose, not the why can't I be somewhere else? Why can't this season be over? But what am I learning? How am I growing in the purpose of this place right now in my life, in your life? I guarantee you that if you'll ask that question, God will show you. And the peace that even in the midst of a storm, Jesus stood up in the boat and said, be still, be still, there's peace. And so today I want you to know that I want you to speak peace to your storms. I know many of you have had other storms that aren't virus related, but they get virus magnified. Not virus related, but virus magnified because it makes it more difficult because of COVID-19. But God's peace is not based on circumstance. God's peace is not based on circumstance. So I want you to speak to the storm because the power of Jesus, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So I want you to stand up. I want you to speak peace to the storm, speak peace to your soul and trust in the Lord with all your heart. And then I want you to just be in his presence. Recently, I posted a picture of my little granddaughter just kneeling face down to be in the presence of of Jesus. There's nothing like being in the presence of Jesus. And you know what? Wherever you are, Jesus can be with you. So you can have his presence. Very important for you to know that. And lastly, just what's on my heart is that the Lord woke me up early, early this morning. Take up your cross and follow me. I had to look it up. I had to look at the scripture. What was Jesus saying? Take up your cross and follow me. That in the middle of a storm, in the middle of the circumstance, we want the suffering to be over. We pray for the victories. We don't like the journey in the middle. But if we're going to take up our cross and follow the example of Jesus, then we are going to have some suffering and we are going to have to bear our own cross, our own suffering, our own circumstance. But if we follow Christ, we will follow him to victory. So embrace the place. Ask him, what is the purpose and how can I grow? Know that Jesus is with you in the storm. He's with you in your boat. And know that in his presence, there is fullness of joy. I want you to listen to Mary. She is an amazing woman. She's an amazing leader in the Assemblies of God World Missions Arena of Latin America. And um, she understands people who have gone through very difficult situations. I've worked with her in Costa Rica and taken videos in Spanish to her students. And I just know that her real and relevant refreshing word will speak to your life as you embrace the place, accept his peace and his purpose, and know that in his presence, he'll be with you today. So enjoy Thursday Connect, and thank you, Mary, so much for taking time to be a part of us. While you're in Costa Rica, you're here with us in Italy and around the world. God bless everybody. Have an amazing day. Hi, my name is Mary Mann, and I bring you greetings from Costa Rica. I am a missionary here in Costa Rica and work throughout Latin America with a ministry called Child Hope. 
And in Child Hope, we transform the lives of children who have been born into poverty with a quality Christian education, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and other acts of love of Jesus. We help them have food and medical care and clean water and the things they need so that they can grow and thrive. Um, and I'm so grateful that Pastor Jennifer has invited me to be able to share with you um, this morning. You know, I think um, it's it's such a blessing that one blessing we have through this COVID time is that the Lord's opened our eyes, that we are able to communicate with people without being there. And I'm able to share with my sisters and brothers um, from the other end of the world. And so I'm just so grateful for this opportunity. <laughs> Pardon. You know, we're all facing um, challenges in our current world because of this COVID crisis, this pandemic that the whole world is living through together. And I know you as well as I are learning to adjust to the current normal. I don't like to say the new normal because this is gonna change and we're gonna get back to the real normal, but our current normal um, provides challenges. And I know God is faithful to help us adjust to how to thrive in our lives, both personally, um, our work lives, our ministry lives. I know in my life, um, because my ministry takes me throughout Latin America, as of this week, I have canceled eight trips that I was supposed to be taking since March. And, you know, God is gracious in helping me to be creative and, and learn how I can continue fulfilling his purpose for my life, even in the midst of this um, global pandemic and this crisis. So Jennifer's asked me to share with you a little bit today about how faith can help us to navigate in times of crisis and chaos. You know, when I look at today's world and everything the world is going through, and I see friends and family members and acquaintances on Facebook, I don't know how they can survive without God at this time. We need our faith. We need our faith in God. We need that rock to stand on to help us to be strong and face the adversities that we're facing right now that the whole world is facing. And to be honest, without God, there is little faith um, there's little hope, excuse me, in this world right now. When we talk about faith, we all think of the scripture in Hebrews 11.1 1, that teaches us, that says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance of what we do not see. You know, faith is based on the inside of us. It's not based on something on the outside. We, we feel it on our inside. It's not contingent upon circumstances or, or how things are going in our life. It's that assurance that God gives us. And you know, we can be confident that we're gonna make it through these difficult days because we have the assurance of God's faithfulness. You see, our faith is built on who God is. It's built on his character. Um, it's built on his will for our lives, and we'll be able to, to make it through. Um, it's not our hope and our confidence, our faith is not based on what we see going on in the world today. You know, sometimes I listen to the news and there's a, oh, a pot potential vaccine or a cure here. And you know, that's not what our faith's built on. Our faith is based on God and his character, on who he is, and we know that he is faithful. And we know he is faithful to us, to you, to me, to each one of us. Um, you know, when we're going through something, a uh, challenge, um, it, it's good to talk to someone who's gone through it before and been through it. If I am, for example, when my parents passed away, um, I wanted to talk to someone who had lost a parent and see how did God help you through this. And, and in our lives, that's how we can be a cur encouragement to other brothers and sisters to share our testimony, to share our story. You know, and that's one of the challenges here right now that, that's new for us in the midst of COVID is this is new for our generation. We can't find anybody who's lived through a global, global pandemic that can share their faith with us. But what we can do is remind one another of God's faithfulness. And because God was faithful in this, he'll be faithful today. Because he was faithful to me when I faced the challenges when my mother died or when my father died, he is faithful to me now. Perhaps he was faithful to you when you came through a struggle with cancer or when you lost a job or when your child was in a horrible accident, God was faithful then. And because of that, he will be faithful to you today because that is what our faith is built on. It is built on the character of God and God's faithfulness to us. Well, I love that Jennifer used the word navigate 
how does faith help us navigate in times of crisis and chaos? And it immediately made me think of the story in the New Testament, which I love so much about um, when Jesus calms the seas. And I think perhaps to me, that's always been such a scary thought because I, I never learned to swim as a kid. Um, finally, though, about four years ago, I started taking swimming lessons here in Costa Rica. And while I'm still learning, I can get in the pool and swim. And I'm pretty confident if I fell overboard, I could swim back to the boat. But um, I think that that story was always so terrorizing to me because the thought of being in the middle of a lake in a storm and the waves, it says, were crashing over the boat. I would have been pretty scared, too, there with the disciples. But let me read the story to you. In Mark 4, 35 to 38... Um, the scripture tells us that that day, that day, when evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. And the disciples woke him up and said to him, teacher, don't you care? If we drown, and he got up, he rebuked the wind, and he said to the waves, quiet, be still. And the wind died down, and it was completely calm. And he said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. You know, when um, COVID started and it spread throughout the world and um, everybody was starting to um, feel the, the consequences and, and, and the struggles of having to live um, in the middle of a pandemic. I remember the first time I read something on Facebook where someone said, you know, we're all in the same boat. And then shortly after that, it was corrected because we're not in the same boat. We all have different boats. Um, I'm fortunate to be in this boat here in Costa Rica. I'm fortunate that I'm at home. Um, you know, I know people that have been separated from family, separated from home, separated from the country they love and because of the regulations not able to return. So we're all in different boats. Some of us have a better situation economically. Um, I'm grateful many of my family, extended family members are able to work from home. Other people aren't so fortunate and they're not able to work from home. Um, but we're all in different boats going through this storm together. But do you know what? We all have Jesus in our boats. And that's what I want to talk about today. You know, when God created you and when he created me and when he created Pastor Jennifer and Pastor Rick, he knew that we would be living in this time. He knew that a global pandemic was going to hit. And he knew we would be able to thrive and succeed and maintain our faith and make it through this. And you know what? I know it's hard to think about it right now, but in several years, people are gonna be looking to us for lessons of faith that we have learned because we were able to live through this time and maintain our faith. So anyway, we are here in this time of history for such a time as this. And I would just on the side wanna say, let's all pray and seek God. God, why do you have me, Mary Nan, here, Costa Rica in the middle of a pandemic? What is my purpose right now in this place? Because you placed me here. You created me to live through this period of history. And I want to know why that is. Well, when Jesus got in the boat with you, he said, just like he said to the disciples, let's go over to the other side. You know, sometimes when I read that story, I think, oh, the disciples are in a boat and the storm comes up. And I forget the way it started. It started because Jesus said, let's go to the other side. Jesus had a purpose for them. Jesus had a plan for them and going through the storm was part of it. And Jesus has a purpose and a plan for each one of us. Um, mine is here, Mary, let's, let's lead child care, child hope, and let's, you know, move back to Costa Rica and lead this ministry. Jesus said that to me in my boat a few years ago. And here I am in this crisis. He knew the storm was going to the squall was going to come up. He knew there was going to be a storm now. And I just want to remind you, he knew whatever it is in your life, if it's a new family you've started, if it's a new job you've taken, if it's a, uh, you know, a new business you're starting up right now, 
Jesus is the one that said, hey, let's go over to the other side. And he's in your boat, even though the storm is kicking up right now, or it's in full force wherever you are. Um, he knew the storm was coming when he said that to you. And um, he knew it was gonna be a challenge, but do you know what? He is gonna get you to the other side, whatever that is. And I have confidence in my life and my ministry that God's gonna get me to the other side through the storm. And um, he is gonna be with you as well and get you through this storm. You know, in the story, the storm arises and the disciples are so scared that they wake up Jesus. And they're kind of freaking out there. And they say, I can't believe they said it. Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Oh my goodness, they were afraid and they were so very afraid that it led to their faith lacking. And they even questioned Jesus's very character. Can you imagine saying to God, do you even care? Well, actually, can I tell you, sometimes I say that. I've said that when things have been bad and I'm being honest with God. I'm like, why did that happen, Lord? Don't you care? But we can't let that happen when we're scared. And that's what happens. You know, we feed our fear. We feed our fear and it takes away our faith. And that's what happened to the disciples. They were so scared. They fed that fear. They got scared, 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 so that they even questioned um, the character of Jesus. They even questioned God's love for them. And it's, let's not do that. Let's not do that in this time. Let's put our trust in God and who he is, even though everything is topsy-turvy and there's turmoil around us. Let's not do that. And Jesus's response was he rebuked the wind. He told the waves to be quiet. Everything got calm. And then he turned to the disciples and he said, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? You know, I don't want to be that. I don't want to hear that from God. I want to have faith. Um, I don't want to be like the disciples who gave into the fear and allowed it to diminish their faith. You know, as we're navigating this storm of COVID-19, we need to hang on to our faith and trust Jesus because he is faithful. I often wonder what would have happened if the disciples hadn't lost their faith. Um, if they were just in the boat, the storm came up, Jesus was sleeping. You know, they did what they had. Obviously it says the, the water came over, the, the waves came over the boat, so they're bailing water out. You know, if they did the hard work, you know, they did it, they let Jesus sleep, they kept their faith. They could have gotten to the other end of the lake, the other side and heard Jesus say, well done, my good and faithful servant instead of hearing, have you no faith? Why have you lost your faith? I wanna be the person who gets to the other side of this COVID crisis, this pandemic, and I wanna hear God say, well done, my good and faithful servant. I know it's gonna be hard, I know it's gonna be challenging, but I know God is in my boat, and I know God's got a purpose for me. You know, God can give us peace through this. You know, he calmed the waves, but I believe those disciples could have had peace in the midst of the storm. You know, there's a story that says that in a town, I don't know where, I'm sure it was Europe, um, they had a contest to see who could paint a painting that best portrayed peace. And so all the artists in the area painted their, their interpretation of peace. When the judges were done, they had it down to two different paintings and they had them on display and all the people in the village came to see what these paintings were. They un unveiled the first one and it was just a beautiful painting of a calm lake. It almost looked like a mirror. It was just like calm lake. There was a little hillside. There was a little valley. There was a um, flock of sheep that were grazing there and it looked peaceful. Everybody thought that must've been the winner. No, that was, that was second place. And then they unveiled the next painting. It was like, just raise your blood pressure to look at it. It was disturbing. It was a violent storm. It was a beautiful painting and so realistic but you could see waves crashing and you could see the wind blowing. And it was the side of this, a shore of a sea, a rocky shore. And you could see the waves splashing up high onto the rocks, onto the shore and this violence. And you could just imagine if you were in a boat there, you'd be crashed, crashed against the rocks. It's like, how can this represent peace? But then the more the villagers looked at this painting, 
all of a sudden they saw in the center, in the cleft of the rocks, there was like a little cave, little cleft in the rocks, and they could see something in there. And it was a nest with little baby birdies and the mama bird that was protecting them. And right there, they couldn't tell there was a storm. The mom had the bird, the little birdies under her wings. They were safe in the nest. Their mom had built them a, a good nest in a safe pot place. And that was peace. And you know, that's what peace is for us. You know, peace is best experienced in the midst of turmoil. You almost don't notice you have peace when there's not turmoil around. And that's what the time we're going through. And we need that kind of peace. And that was the, the storm that the disciples were going through. There was so much torment and terrible things going on around them and scary waves and wind and, and the fear that was gripping them. But God gave them peace. Jesus calmed the storm. And we can have that peace. And this is the kind of peace that we can have. Even today's world in, in this pandemic, we can have that calm, confident assurance of our faith that's not based on the circumstances, that's not based on the raging storm around us or the waves crashing against the cliffs. Our faith and our peace is based on who God is. We can have peace as the storm rages. It's based on God's character. That was what our faith is all about. That assurance of what, who God is, that's what it is and God is faithful. So just kind of in summary, I just want to remind you, first of all, you have a purpose. I have a purpose. God has a plan in the midst of this. Whatever journey you are on right now, remember that it's Jesus who said to you months ago or years ago, days ago, let's go to the other side. Jesus is the one who gave you the plan, the journey you're on right now, and he's got a purpose for it. So don't forget that. And he's going to get you to the other side. Second, presence. We have got the presence of Jesus in our boat. Even if sometimes it seems like he's sleeping, he's there with us. Let's not forget that. Let's draw close to him. Let's hear from him. Let's learn from him. Let's, get, let's gain our strength from him. And then peace. We can have peace in the midst of the storm because of who Jesus is, because of who God is, because of the promises that are in the word of God. It's not based on whether they're the, the cases here in Costa Rica, there's a lot of turmoil because the cases continue to rise and there's a concern about ICU beds. Our peace isn't based on that. It's not based on whether there's a vaccine around the corner or a cure for COVID. Our peace is based on who God is. And that's where our faith is, in the character of God, in the faithfulness of God. You know, one of the things that, that I do to keep my faith strong at this time, almost immediately after it started, I started a playlist, a COVID playlist on my phone, my computer. I remember the first song I put on is one, You Are My Hiding Place, because that just came to my mind that first week. Um, and I noticed, I went back and looked at all the songs I put on there. I'm like, oh, that's a good COVID, good COVID song. Um, they're based on faith the truth of God's word, who God is, the Psalms, because also we need to come to God sometimes and say, God, I'm scared. I don't know what's going on. I need you to strengthen me, help my faith. We need those Psalms too. Well, one of the songs in um, on my playlist, one of my favorite ones is an old hymn and it's called Be Still My Soul. And I'll tell you, I listen to that when I just cry and I just, I, it should be to me the COVID like theme song, <laughs> the person of faith's theme song for COVID. But I just want to read one of the um, freight, one of the uh, verses to you. Be, if I could sing, I'd sing it to you, but I'm not a good singer. Um, Be still my soul, thy God doth undertake to guide the future as he has the past. Thy hope, thy confidence, let nothing shake. All now mysterious shall be bright at last. Be still, my soul, the waves and wind still know his voice who ruled them while he dwelt before below. The waves and wind still know his voice. COVID-19 knows God's voice. And we can have confidence and peace in that. Our souls can be still and we can be at peace. 
you know, I like the other line in that song, he will guide the future as he has the past. You know, I just want to encourage each of you, and I try to do this, to remember God's faithfulness in the past. Remember one time um, when you were filled with angst and concern and confusion and God came through and he was faithful. Let's share those stories with one another. Let's, let's share them with our brothers and sisters and be an encouragement. The same God that did this in the past will be with us today. You know, in Child Hope, we've had to um, come up with new ways of ministering to the children. Um, in, I think, all of our countries, those kids are still at home and our teachers are, it's, it's not summertime in most of our countries, so our kids are in school right now. And so teachers are finding creative ways to keep in touch with the children. Um, our Most of our students don't have computers. We work with the very poor, but everybody's got a cell phone and everybody's got WhatsApp on their cell phone. So the teachers have become quite creative in sending um, little lessons and encouraging words and devotionals um, home to the children on their parents' cell phone. Well, I got a um, call from one of the mothers. It was right in the beginning of the crisis in Costa Rica when the virus started spreading so quickly. She needed to go to work. Her kids' school, and her kids were in one of our Child Hope schools. She had, I believe, four children. And she had to go to work and leave them alone because she had to be separated too from her, her mother, the grandmother, who could have taken care of the kids. She left that day to take the bus and she was filled with fear. She had fear for her children because she left them home alone. She put the older girl who was fourth grader in charge of the younger children trusted her to have them work on the school paper, the school work that the teachers had left home. She was afraid to go on the bus. Um, she was afraid to be out in public. She didn't know what to expect. Um, and she was just, just very distraught. She needed something from the Lord. Well, while she was on her way to work that day, she got a little bing on her phone. And it was a WhatsApp message from her, one of her children's teachers um, who had sent an encouraging word home for the child. Well, as she was driving to, to work that day, or she wasn't driving, she was in the bus, she listened to it and it was a devotional from her child's teacher based on Psalm 91, verses one and two. I'll read them to me, to you. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I trust. And the Holy Spirit ministered to that woman that day on the bus. He gave her peace. He gave her peace for her own safety as she navigated her, her new work schedule. He gave her peace for her children at home. He filled her with peace. Now that lady is in a very different boat than I am. She has to go on the bus to work. She has small children that somebody needs to take care of. But God has called her to a purpose as well. And the scripture reminded her, that scripture reminded her that Jesus is in her boat, that Jesus was with her in the bus as she went to work that day. He reminded her that he was her refuge and that she could trust in him even in these difficult times. Psalm 89, eight and nine are the verses I wanna leave with you today. Psalm 89, eight and nine. Who is like you, Lord God Almighty? You, Lord, are mighty, and your faithfulness surrounds you. You rule over the surging sea. When its waves mount up, you still them. You know, God is faithful. He's faithful to each one of us, and he will remain faithful. Let's hang on to that faithfulness, and let's remember that we have a purpose in the midst of these times. God has a purpose for us. Let's seek that. He's the one who said, let's go to the other side. We have his presence. We have him with us, whether we're um, sheltering in place or we're in our place of work. He is with us. We have his presence. And then in the midst of this raging storm that's called COVID-19, that the whole world is experiencing right now, we can have God's peace. The peace that passes all understanding. You know, I want to just challenge each of you to remember God's faithfulness in the past. And when the fear creeps in, when the waves seem high or the wind seems strong, remember God's faithfulness in the past and remember that he is faithful today. And I pray that your hearts will be filled with that calm confidence and that assurance 
of faith based on not what we feel, not the circumstances that are raging around us, but based on the character of God. He is good, he is faithful, he loves you, and he cares for you. God bless you. Let's, let's close in a little prayer. I just wanna pray for you. Father, I pray for each of my brothers and sisters around the world, Lord, that could be listening to this and sharing with us in this time right now. First of all, Lord, I pray that you would um, fill each of our hearts and our minds with a memory of when we were going through different difficult times and you were faithful to us. Lord, as we face this difficult days um, through the COVID crisis, Lord, bring memories of your past faithfulness in our lives to our minds, to our hearts, Lord, so that we can remember who you are, remember your character, remember your faithfulness. And the God that was faithful to us in the past, you will be faithful to us in the present and in the future. Lord, you have called each of us to be here wherever we may be for such a time as this. Lord, help us to see the purpose that you have for us in this time. Help us to see the purpose of our life, our call, our heart, our families, Lord, as we navigate what you've called us to um, in these challenging times. Lord, help us to remember that you said, let's go to the other side and you will get our boat to the other side of the lake. Oh, Jesus, we thank you for your presence with us every day. Lord, I pray um, that you would help remind us of it when we get distracted by circumstances around the world. Lord, help us to remember that you are with us every step of the way, Lord. We thank you for your presence and the strength that you give us because of who you are, because of your character. And Lord, I thank you for peace, the peace that you give us in spite of the storm, in the midst of the storm. Help us to rest in your peace. Calm our hearts, Lord Jesus. I pray that you would give peace, that peace that passes all understanding to each person, Lord, around the world that is uh, listening to this today, Lord. God bless us. God, I do pray that you would use the creativity, the intellects of people that you have created around the, the world, Lord, to bring a vaccine, to bring a cure for the virus, Lord. I pray that you would work through your creation to help the world discover uh, the way just to, to hold back this virus, Lord. God, I pray for those who are facing these uncertain times without you, Lord. I pray that you would help each of us to share your love, your faith, your salvation with those that need it so much now. God, I pray that many would turn to you in these times. And I pray that each one of us would be an instrument to help them to come to saving knowledge of you today, Jesus. God, I bless everyone here. I pray that you would bless Pastor Rick and Pastor Jennifer and their ministry in Italy, Lord. Bless them, bless their church, uh, keep them safe, keep them healthy. In Jesus' name, amen. It was so nice to share with you today. Um, God bless you wherever you are, and I do hope someday that I'll get a chance to meet each one of you. Blessings.